Hi, I'm Phyllis from southernfrugal.com. This morning we're getting ready to uh, finish making our Roman shades. Now I've already made one and we'll go in there in just a minute and I'll let you see the one that's already finished. But right now I wanted to talk to you about sewing machines. Now this is a Brother sewing machine. That's the name brand. And I just keep it in the box that I purchased it in. And I got this at Walmart for $59. And let's see, I think I've had it about five years, so they're probably more than that now. But uh, what happened is my very expensive uh, sewing machine, I think we paid about $600 for it years ago, but it did everything. But we've come a long way with sewing machines. This one does, let's see, can you see over here on the corner? does as much as the very expensive machine did. And um, I actually bought it one Sunday afternoon. I was mending something and my machine just, the motor burned up, just burned up. So I ran out to Walmart and bought this and it happened to be on sale, $59. And I've been using it ever since. So why should you pay all that money for one that does all this fancy stuff when this will do almost the same thing the more expensive ones will do? So anyway, I wanted to just mention that before we get started. So uh, anyway, uh, what we have done already is uh, made one. And uh, I'm just going to take y'all in there and show you the one that's already completed. And then we'll get to work on this one. So we'll be right back. All right, here's the one that uh, I made, the first one I made. And this is the first time I have made one that would actually fit inside the window frame. And those are, of course, a lot harder than those that just fit outside the window frame because you don't have to have your measurements so exact by doing that. But anyway, there it is. You see I've got a little grommet up here. Now I had to get the bigger size because they didn't have any smaller at Hobby Lobby. But what I was looking for was one that would uh, fold down like that and look a little more tailored. So there it is. All right, so we're going to go back in there. Of course, I've got it up now because it's daytime. And uh, I don't know if you can see that or not, but I missewed one of the seams up there. Anyway, I took that out and that will eventually go away. But anyway, there it is. So we've got one, two, three, four folds in that and then we've got a little weight at the bottom of it and I used the connection for some uh, blinds that we had up that were pretty old some of those uh, bamboo type shades I used the top of that and that little connection inside that holds the cord up and in the bottom I used a little board that was on the other shades but you can uh, get a board you know a little one by two or so at, at lows and one for the bottom two, no problem. All right, let's go back in there and see if we can get started on the other shades. All right, before we get started measuring uh, on this uh, material, I want to show you some of the equipment you'll need. One of, the, one of the things you'll need is a dowel, and you can get these at Lowe's or Home Depot. They're usually 36 inches long. Now, I've already cut mine to the right size that I need. And these are um, just a teeny bit over an eighth of an inch in diameter. And we're gonna make pockets on the material so we can slide these in. The other thing you'll need is some type of board that fits exactly inside the window. Now, because these were those bamboo shades, they did fit exactly inside the window. And I've got my little roller attachment already on there and then this little attachment is the one that uh, will stop the cords from going back down so you can raise them up and lower them just like blinds and you can get these they're not expensive at all and the place you can get them and I'll just mention this is fix my blinds and this was uh, on the internet I did order some of the stuff from the internet just because I wanted to get the right cord color. So I had to order the cord uh, also. And um, 
this cord will match my material now. At usually the material stores, you can only get one, two colors, black and white. And I, I didn't want white, I didn't want black, so I had to go ahead and order those. Now these are grommets that I got from Hobby Lobby, right here. And they come in a pack of eight, I only needed four, but you can snap those in, cut the inside of them out of the material, uh, and that allows the cord to come through to the front side of the Roman shade. Because you don't want it on the back, because then you'd always have to be reaching around the back of it to pull it up and down. And then, the other thing I got were these little vase shaped little things and this is where the the pull cord goes in so you can grab a hold of it and pull them up and down so i got those and then these little plastic rings are what's going to guide the cord on the material so those will be sewn on in certain places on the material so if you did this with just using a board and you can definitely do that uh, this board i've got measures right just a shade under an inch wide and a half inch thick so you you can buy these little boards in fact you can get them at Lowe's and they'll actually cut it for you so if you wanted to make two Roman shades just go buy a length of this size wood and just let them cut it for you right there they would probably also cut the dowels for you if you had your measurements if you didn't have a saw or anything now we've got a chop saw I just put these all together with a couple of rubber bands and cut them all at one time. And then I sanded the ends just a little bit so there'd be no splinters on there because we're gonna sew a pocket for these to go in. All right, well I can't think of anything else other than the instructions. So, um, my windows in the den are not standard size and there are four windows in there. Now, I have made Roman shades several different times, but I always put them on the outside of the window frame because I knew how hard it would be, and it is hard, because you cannot be off even a fourth of an inch when you're putting them inside the window frame. So it took me about three hours to work out the details of this. So um, anyway, uh, I wanted to make the most use of the material. So I was get, trying to get so I didn't have to put one window on a 58 inch uh, or not 50, it was actually 60 inch wide material because it was uh, 27 inches plus I needed room for the seam so I had to do a lot of really figuring close but uh, I was able to get it so that I only had to or to get half the material I would have the other way so it would have been called the cost would have been double and by the way, to get a, a Roman shade this size for one window, if I ordered it over the internet, was $237, which didn't count shipping. So uh, I can make them for much, much less than that. Of course, it does take your time, but you can make them. All right, so let me move this stuff out of the way and we'll get right on down to business. Okay, I wanted to mention this. Uh, when you're cutting out the material, you really need a T-square, or the other thing you can do if you don't have a T-square is you can unravel the material on one end until you get it all straight, and then you're ready to go. All right, so in working out the spacing so I can get my folds exactly right, and of course I want them to look exactly the same on all four of the uh, uh, Roman shades, uh, first I cut out the material and I knew my width plus I added the amount for the seam plus a little fold back on the seam and I cut the material out first and got it all even at the top and then I actually marked on the material within the seam line that this was the top. Alright, so then the next thing is to measure down on the folds so that they measure exactly right and they fold exactly right. Because we're gonna make a little uh, pocket for the dowels. And that those dowels are what help make the folds. So, in cutting out the material, I first cut out the material with the seam allowance and then 
I folded in the seam allowance, right? Well, let me see. Can y'all see? No, I'll show it over here. Folded in the seam allowance and folded it under a fourth of an inch, and then I pressed it. Then I laid this material, the, the front side of the material, on the lining material, and that's the way I cut out the lining material. So the lining is actually not as wide as the other material, so that way when you sew them together, because you're going to sew it up like a pillowcase on three sides, the top and both sides, uh, you know exactly where to, uh, to sew because you can see the little seam in the front material. So you make your seams and make yourself a little pillowcase. All right, so that's what's done here. I've got all of these already sewn up. And so now we're going to place a mark to show where the line goes and where we can make our pocket. So my first one from the top comes down, and this is not to scale, but my numbers are right. The first pocket is going to be at 14 inches from the top. So, I'm going to measure the top here. My ruler is only 13 inches, so I'm having to use actually a tape measure. So what I'm going to do is measure down to the 14 inch mark, and then I'm just going to take my pen and put a little bitty mark right there. And then we want to go over to the other side and do exactly the same thing. Mark down to the 14 inch mark, which is right there. So let me double check that. Yeah. 14 inches. And then this one is down on the 14 inch mark. So that's going to make the first fold when I pull up the shades. Now the way I make a straight line sewing, or as straight as I can get it, I use masking tape. It works wonders. So I just fold back the tip of it. Well, let me actually cut it. And just fold back the tip of it so I'll be able to pull it off easily. And this masking tape is going to be a straight line. So I just take it and hit it right on my mark. And I'm going to sew right below that line. Then I'm just going to tear it off there. All right, so I know that my line where I'm going to make my first seam is going to be right along that line. So I'm sewing my lining and my front fabric together. Now to hold that in place, because the two, we've got two pieces of material here, I'm going to use some pins and just pin it every so often. And these are just quilting pins, those big long ones. So just get under it and I'm going to pin it all the way across because I don't want it to slip when I'm sewing it. All right, so what I'm going to do then is make the next line where I'm going to sew, <clears throat> excuse me, will be right beside this line. And I'm going to actually be sewing two seams along here. So I want the pocket to be a... Uh, uh, what I'll be doing is making a pocket for the little dowel to go right in there. So one seam goes right beside the line of the tape, and then I'm going to use my pressure foot on my uh, sewing machine kind of as a guide, and I'll make the next seam, let's see, let me give you the exact measurements. It will be a little over, well, let's see, one, two, three, about, uh, well, we'll just do it a half inch. We'll make it a half inch. A half inch uh, one that's going to go down two. So we'll end up with two seams right here. All right, now let's go ahead and mark the whole thing while we're here. All right, now my first one came down 14 inches. And the reason for that is because this is the top. So when this is folded over, it will actually mean a fold of about seven, maybe six inches, because I'm going to have an 
inch that's going to go up over the top of the board where I'm going to staple it on. So this would make a fold of about six inches. So the next one down, we're going to measure out 10 inches. And so we're going to make it 10 inches from the first line or the line on the masking tape. So I'm going to mark the same thing, 10 inches on this side. I'm going to go over there and make 10 inches. The next one will be 11 inches and the last one will be 12 inches in between them. All right, so I'm going to get that all marked and we'll be back. Okay, so I've got all four of my uh, lines marked where I'm going to make the uh, little pockets for the dowels. And I've pinned them down so they'll stay in place because we've got two layers of material here. And of course, uh, I want to double check and make sure everything's exactly right. So what I generally do is measure from the top of the material all the way down to the first line, which is exactly 47 inches. Now I'm going to do the same thing over here and make sure it's exactly right. And it measures exactly 47 inches. So I know I'm right on that. So I'm going to go ahead and sew the pockets in, which will be two uh, sewing lines uh, about a half inch apart on all four of these. Then I'm going to take the masking tape off and the, the pins out and then I'm going to press it just to lock the stitches in. All right, after that's done, we'll be back. All right, we have got our uh, little pocket sewn for the dowels. The next step is to put the little rings on. Can y'all see that? And these little rings are what guides the string that will pull the shade up and make the proper folds. So I know from my little uh, plan that I worked out that I want those little rings four and one-fourth inches from the edge. Now you can see I've got three here, three uh, Roman shades that I'm making and I'm making them all three at the same time because they go uh, up on three windows that are all together. So if anything is off it would really show up. So. What I've done is lined up my seams on all of them just to double check and make sure they're all right. So now I'm going to mark on the seam right at the bottom of the little pocket, if I can find my pen. There it is. I'm going to use the ruler and from this outside edge I'm going to measure four and one-fourth inches. And I'm just going to put a little mark right there using the bottom uh, seam there, four and one-fourth inches. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side, and then I'll show you how I sew these on. So we'll be right back. All right, I want to show you all how I sew these little rings on. I don't really do it by hand because it takes way too long. So you see my little mark right there? All right, I'm going to push that down. And I've got my machine sitting on the zigzag. And I'm going to put my needle in right at the bottom of that little pocket seam. And put my needle in. Then I'm going to raise my pressure foot up. Put my little ring right in there. Kind of hold it. And then I'm going to put my pressure foot down. Right on there. So I'm going to zigzag right over the top of this little ring. All right, I'm sorry, I'm wiggling because I'm trying to hold the camera. All right. All right, here we go. All right, so the next time my needle is going to go down, can you see it? I'm going to leave it in that position because then I'm going to sew the next one on. Now, what I'll do, let me pull that out. Make sure I've got enough thread there. Pull my thread out. And then I'm going to cut it. And then... See the little needle? 
I mean the little uh, thread. I'm going to take that and pull it up. See that little thread comes through and then take my pin or a straight pin. I'm trying to do this looking through the camera. There. Nope. Let me look. There. Clip it and pull it through. And then I'm going to find the other one over here. Pull it through if I can. Yeah, there. Trying to do this looking through the camera lens. Can't do it looking through the camera lens there. All right, there I got it. All right, and then I'm gonna pull that through, and then I'm just gonna tie these off on the back side here, so then on the front side, that's all you see right there. So once I tie that, it'll tighten that up, so that's all you'll see. All right, I've got to do this, let's see, two, four, six, seven more times, and we'll be through with this panel and ready to start on another uh, little uh, way to attach the uh, hem and to attach the top of it. So we'll be back. Here's what it looks like on the other side. So I'm gonna go ahead and sew all of these on in the same way, see? We'll tie that off, all those strings, and we'll be back. All right, we have got all of the little uh, rings sewn on now, and I did uh, pull the threads through and I tie them off on the back. I did the same thing on all the seams here, uh, just because back stitching will make it pucker a little bit, and you'll be able to see that. So I pulled all the strings through and you know did a square knot on the back of them. So we're now ready to do the hem. And this is the weight that's going to go in the hem. Again, this came off of my um, uh, the other blinds that were old and I tore apart, but I saved the parts to them. So this is going to go on the bottom, inside the bottom hem. So what I want to do now is measure down from the top, way up there, all the way down, and I'm going to do it on all three of these uh, curtains measure all the way down and here's what I want. I want to allow one inch for the hem or where it's going to be attached to the wood at the top because it, the inside of the window measures 52 and 3 fourths inches and so I'm going to make it all the way down to 53 and 3 fourths. Now the bottom board which is this is going to cause the hem to come up by a fourth of an inch. So if I go ahead and make the total length 53 and 3 fourths, that should mean that the uh, curtain will be up off the windowsill by about a fourth of an inch. So I'm going to go ahead and measure these, uh, press the seam, and we're going to go ahead and sew the seam and make all three of them exactly the same. So after I've done that, we'll be back. All right, we are down to the final stretch on these uh, Roman shades. I've already finished the other two, and so I want to just record how I connect everything on this last one. So this is the board that goes on top, and I marked these because so I would know which window they fit on exactly. We're going to go ahead and put the screws in in the top, It'll, uh, partially screw them in, but this is the top of the curtain, and so what we want to do is fit this on perfectly and uh, we know that this is one inch across the top of it so I'm going to staple all this all the way across and I'm going to put the screws in and we'll be back and I'll show you what that looks like so be back in just a second all right we got it all stapled on so now when we're ready to uh, wash this all you have to do is take out the staples and remove the strings and you can wash the whole thing and then just staple it back on. 
All right, so the next thing we're going to do is put in the grommet. Now, the purpose of the grommet, and here's what they look like, and they just snap together. Uh, the purpose of that is so that when you pull the string on the shade, that you can pull it from the outside. So, what we're going to do is turn this over now to the right side. And we're going to go from this end because there's where the uh, little uh, strings are going to come through. So what I'm going to do is use this little template that comes with the grommets. And I'm going to mark that on here just under this little contraption that controls the strings. So on all the others, I went down two and a half inches from the top. So what I'm going to do is find that little thing and go down to and get right in the middle of it, which is about right there. Can you all see? I hope you can. Anyway, I'm going to mark two and a half inches is right there. So I'll make me a little mark. And then all you do is just line up that little square, that little bullseye on the little dot. And then I'm just going to circle with my pen. And this is going to be the cutout for the grommet. And the best way to do that is to cut a little X in it to start with. Can you all see that? Now I've got lining under here, so I want to hold my hand under there and make sure I cut the lining too. So I'm just going to snip it until I can get my scissors in. And be very, very careful, very, very careful. And just cut it to the edge. Then cut it to the edge this way. And then we're going to cut this little circle out. So once I get it cut out, because I'm going to have to be very careful, we'll be right back. All right, I got my little circle cut out, and the directions say to put this side in from the top, and then we're going to snap this with the little, uh, their little sharp pin-like things, and we'll snap that on the back. So getting it through is a little difficult, but it's doable. Can you all see? Yeah. So I just start on one end and just kind of walk it around like that. Should go right on without too much difficulty. There. Now, see it's on. All right, now we just take this side and snap it on. Now, people use these little grommets for curtains. It's a little hard to snap it on, but to put it down on the table to do it. I'm using all my might. It's hard. There, it went in a little bit. Yeah, those little needle things catch in there. Oh. There. And then it snaps in and holds all that material in place so nothing unravels or comes apart. All right. There it is. That was easy enough. It does pucker just a little bit. Y'all see? All right. So now the next thing we're ready to do is uh, we're going to put the strings in. And the hardest part about all of this is getting the strings right in this little contraption here because you have to actually hold it up like that so they stay open so the strings will go through. Yeah, it's very hard. This is the hardest thing. I had to use tweezers and worked and worked with it. All right, so I'm going to put the string in and we'll be back. All right, we got the strings through right here through this little thing. Very difficult. I had to actually use tweezers to get them through. Anyway, I also went ahead and put the screws in because 
you have to kind of use a razor blade and cut the holes for these little screws because if you don't they'll kind of buckle you know crimp up the material so I screw them all the way in but w when I'm ready to install it which is going to be in just a minute I go ahead and, and uh, unscrew them all the way that way the screws have a hole to go through all right so the next thing was I put in the dowels and I saved this one out to show you how I do that we've got a seam running right down there and I just take the scissors and because that seam has been pressed open with a steam iron when I originally sewed it together and so then I can just slip the dowel right in there like that Oops, my camera's in the way. Hold on, wait. A tripod. Oops, sorry. Okay, now you just slip it all the way in like that. And the strings to tie them all. Hold on, I'm going to move y'all. I tie a little square knot down here. And then I use, this is uh, like first aid tape, it's cloth, and I find it works really good to hold these little strings on, and uh, it also looks pretty good. So those are the bottom strings. Now, this bottom piece is really a weight, right, hold on, that uh, will help hold the end of the curtain down, and this is the one that was on the little um, bamboo or matchstick curtains. So all I do is slip that in the little pocket where I made the hem. If I can get a hold of it. Can y'all see that? Yeah. Alright. So I just slip that all the way in. And get it in there even. And then to make sure it just stays in there, make sure it's in the middle of the fabric on that fold down at the bottom. Just pull it up like that. Can y'all still see that? Let me see. I don't know. All right, wait a minute. There, there, okay. So, yeah, what we're going to do is make sure that this little weight stays in place. So all I'm going to do is make sure it's all the way in there solidly. And I'm just going to put two staples in it. One right there. one right there. That way that'll keep that little uh, board from slipping out. And then just hammer them in so that they're laying, uh, you know, smooth on there because you wouldn't want to skin your window up with a staple sticking out. All right, we are ready to hang this, so we'll be back. Uh, I'm not going to videotape. Let me turn this around. All right, whoa, where'd you go? All right, let me back it up. Yeah, back up. Okay, so I have literally been working on this all day long, and but I have finished. So all I gotta do is put this one up at the third window, and I'll show y'all what it looks like now. Uh, I'm gonna be filming this at night because if I try to film it towards the window in the daytime, it it doesn't, it doesn't record very well. So anyway, yeah, I'm really tired. So uh, we're going to get this up and we'll give you a look. So we'll be back in just a minute. All right, I've got all three of the Roman shades up on the three windows over here. Of course, this one we had up uh, earlier. But anyway, here's what they look like. There they are. Yeah, and here's this one. And it's down. Well, let me get up. Yeah. All right. So there's what they look like. 
and of course it's already night time now and here's what they look like with the uh, Roman shades are down and there's one dog there's two dog and there's three dog all three dogs ready to go night night all right so there's what it looks like and so we will see y'all tomorrow uh, for smoothies in the morning all right we'll be back